And without further ado, I think it's time uh, we hop on over to the land of Horizon Forbidden West, where Greedy Old Car is going to be showing us the New Game Plus run. Take it away, Car. Hey, everybody. Welcome in. Uh, so yeah, we're playing a New Game Plus story difficulty run of Horizon Forbidden West, uh, where we will be completing the main story as fast as possible. So um, it's a lot of platforming. We abuse some techniques uh, like with what you see here called the slide cancel uh, to move quickly throughout the run. Uh, there's a lot of abusing restarts from checkpoints and things like that so that we can uh, either move ourselves to a more um, opportune location or, uh, you know, uh, just kind of move things along a little bit faster. But uh, a few battles that are quick and if you blink, you'll miss them, but uh, they are quite precise uh, and there's a little bit of RNG involved with machine spawns and things like that. So strap in because we're going to move real quick for a while. Um, so uh, the run starts when I skip uh, cutscene, uh, third cutscene skip uh, coming up here. So I'll let you know when to start the timer. Um, so we select story difficulty. Uh, there is a tutorial in this, uh, but we skip it in this run. Uh, it's part of the any percent run, but we we skip it in this one. And so there is uh, about a minute and 29 seconds of waiting on a cart ride um, here. So we'll uh, and we're not having any game audio because mine's not on. Congratulations. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there's a great song here, but we're going to skip this one. I'll give you the title screen. We're going to skip this one. And then I'm going to skip here in three, two, one, go. And I will be keeping my own splits. Uh, so the premise of the story here is that um aloy is on a mission to kind of figure out what's going wrong with the world um at the end of zero dawn we find out that aloy is uh a clone of a scientist from about a thousand years ago who was there to help save the world um from a swarm of ai robots that could eat biological matter as fuel. Uh, and you, as you can imagine, they got out of control, ate the entire planet, including the people. And what they did was create a program called Zero Dawn that brought all the people back and re-terraformed the Earth. So, um, we are realizing that after having saved the world from a part of that terraforming AI that wanted to destroy it, that was reawakened, um, the world is still not quite right, and so we're on a mission to try and find that terraforming system, uh, that AI, and reform it so that it can fix all of the problems. The, the land is blighted, the water is poisoned, the machines are spreading it without, you know, fixing their programming. And there's a rogue AI by the name of the Hephaestus who makes a lot of hunter-killer machines that attack humans, so there's a whole lot of things going on here. Um, so we're about to skip a cutscene uh, with the very uh, uppity priest. <laughs> and uh, the objective here will be to kind of clear this area of the Daunt out. Um, the Daunt is actually Zion National Park, if you didn't know that. Um, this all takes place in uh, the kind of mid-3000s of, uh, you know, our Earth's future. Uh, so one of, like I said earlier, one of the things that we do is slide cancel movement. Um, normally you can either just slide or you can roll um, for movement. Uh, in HZD, a Zero Dawn uh, game, it was all rolling all the time. Uh, here we are sliding, and as I slide, uh, as she drops to the ground, I hit the run button again, and she will cancel that slide and I can go again. And what that does is uh, kind of extends this quick movement she does as she goes through um the slide so it keeps us moving a little bit uh here uh, for the story i have to upgrade the the original bow that they give you and then that gives me access to a type of arrows that would help me get through the story uh it is only for story purposes here on new game plus we have really op weapons and this is story mode so everything kind of goes down in one shot unless i hit armors or something like that so so here we're going to get ourselves a mount, um, our first mount, and hopefully our mounts will behave today. Um, mounts are a little finicky in the Forbidden West. Uh, they like to stop dead from a sprint <laughs> over the smallest things. Uh, if you catch the side of anything with a hitbox, they may stop. 
Uh, and our first little trick here is I go right, and normally there would be three enemies to kill here. Uh, and there is this time. He did not go away. So. And this is a bad start. Alright. Anyhow, you can make that one in the middle go away if you get it right. And then here's our first restart from save. Yeah, the mount. The mount did not, uh, did not cooperate. Um, so we restart from save there because this guy has to climb down a ladder. And that makes him come down faster. And we can immediately start, uh speaking with him um and he tells us where the person we're looking for is uh, and we're headed to him right now and so this is an invincible machine by story so if you hit him his health doesn't go down or anything you're just supposed to follow it uh but we kind of go by it and that wasn't actually me hitting him the, the mount just does that uh so it tries to run at or away from whatever it is around including wildlife so it can be real fun i am really screwing up this morning and so there's one thing that can happen where you hit armor, and you'll see red damage numbers. Um, and they don't die in one shot, so. Yeah, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get the jitters out. It's no big deal. So I have a um, couple of different weapons to use here while we're waiting for him to come down. Uh, hunter bows, which are light bows. Uh, sharp shot bows, which are kind of your heavy hitters. Uh, here's a shard shooter, basically, a uh, gauntlet that I use. Um, for one part of the run, and uh, there's some other bombs and things like that that we'll be getting into as well. So, so you'll see how they all work at some point in the run. And so we do a lot of skipping of dialogue, uh, and you have to make little selections throughout, and usually you kind of got to time them so you can keep the dialogue skipping going. And we're going to fast travel over here. And head over to this quarry to kill the last of the bristlebacks, which are those big machines I was chasing after and killing, um, that are kind of haunting this place and destroying everything. One less machine. Oh, she fell off. Two of them are going to come here. Another one down. So we're going to call our mount. I'm going to place him over here for after this cutscene. And switch to bombs and acid traps down on the bottom left. We're going to quick chat here. And now we just hop on and go. I think I've cleared out most of the bristlebacks. The valley should be safe enough to travel. All right. I didn't do really any warm up this morning. I can It's 5:10 a.m. for me, so uh <laughs> I am Pretty rusty yet, but uh, we did. I did practice last night, so hopefully the rest of the run will get a little bit better. But uh, yeah, we're only probably about eight seconds behind a normal, normal time for me, so we're doing pretty good so far. I think you're doing fantastically. I'm loving watching it already. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, the game is absolutely gorgeous. Um, mm. They really showed what they could do with the PS5 here. Um, I'm I'm just so happy to have something that like looks so visually stunning to speedrun. So it's hard not to stop sometimes when you're playing and be like, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> what is this thing? Yeah, yeah. Really nice uh, landscapes and just really nice weather and effects and everything else too. So. And the new DLC made it even just more beautiful, and like they added an area of LA and stuff like that. So, yeah. All right. So we just talked to a guy who had stopped work here in this town, um, and so part of our thing was getting work to go on here, so we can bring this priest over to another city um, to hold a peace embassy, basically, with these tribes to the west. Um, the Karja, who are the people I'm talking to now. Are, uh, had a very bloody war with uh, the Tanakh and the Utaru and um, the Nora peoples, who are other tribes here, um, you know, in this post-apocalyptic kind of world or whatever. Um, so they had a crazy king. Machines started kind of going crazy and attacking humans because of rogue AIs. And uh, they thought, well, we should probably start sacrificing other tribes because they, you know, the machines must want this or something. And so he had some really bad blood. <laughs> um, the Karja have bad blood with all the other tribes, and they're trying to fix that with a new king. So we're doing a peace uh, embassy here 
that is going to go very, very wrong. So, And so that was our first uh, real skip. Uh, we climb up to the right there and jump over and glide over so that we don't have to wait for the guy we were talking to to walk up. So a nice little platforming skip that went really well there, even though I was chatting away. Um, so here's our first uh, multi kind of boss fight, quest fight. Um, we'll have three stages here that we tend to make go pretty fast. Uh, say hello to Fashav because you're about to say goodbye to Fashav. Cool character, but he does not get his time to shine. But you do, you do get to read about him a lot in the casual play, which is fun. Not sure I killed enough there. I didn't. That's no good. Okay. Well. So that was really bad RNG. Um, I, uh, you have to kill six of the, th the chargers and the people in the fire, and that did not happen. So I ended up having to kill more. And while I was doing that, I blew up one of the traps I needed to use. But that's fine. <laughs> Uh, normally you would just see me put that down, throw one, put another one down, and then roll away. Um, but I couldn't do that because I had to kill more chargers. But it doesn't happen very often, but sometimes the explosion just doesn't take enough of them out. Uh, and so here's our first real kind of hope, hope that it works the first time thing. There's a fast travel here that doesn't always work right away, like this. There we go. All right. Um... In this game, there's fast travels to rumors that you hear. Uh, so things like this tall neck, giant, giant monster over there. Come on, Mount. Come on, Mount. Come on, Mount. Come on, Mount. Wow, that's just just marathon luck. Anyhow, um, there's fast travels for rumors that don't always work right away after you hear them. Uh, but often, if you wait long enough, or if you do something else, they'll work right away. So, it can be a little off-putting uh, 10 minutes into the run when you get, you know, three failed attempts at fast traveling. <laughs> uh, that's usually a reset there, so. But it's nice when it works right away. It wouldn't be a marathon, would it, without no. the uh, <laughs> difficulties? <laughs> Might this be a good time for me to jump in? Absolutely, yeah, we got a little bit of mount uh, running here, so go right ahead. Uh, awesome. Uh, we had a $10 donation from Anonymous that says, It is a shame in 2023 that we have to do this, but I'm glad I can help. I couldn't agree more. It's a shame that we're raising money for something that should be a right, but I'm really glad to be part of that as well and actually be able to help. So I fully agree with you, Anonymous. We've also got another donation from Violet to Die, a $10 donation to say, In honor of Greedy Old Cars HFW Run. Thank you very much for those donations so far. Yeah, thank you guys so much. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, so, right here, uh, we have to wait a minute and eight seconds for this hologram of Lance Reddick to finish. Um, so I hit that at about 11.30 into the run from on my splits anyway. Um, and if she'll kindly get on the mount. I can't just climb onto the mount while a hologram is playing. The game is very strange. When a hologram is playing, you can't go too far away or you'll have to re-listen to it. Um, which would lose me another minute and eight seconds and then some uh, to travel. Uh, so what ends up happening here is I wait and at 11.30 it was when I activated the console. So at 12.38 I need to cross the threshold of that little blueberry right there. Um, so at about 12.00 or 12.34, I'm going to run from here. Um, and then I should time it about right where I get through. And uh, yeah, uh, it saves a little bit of time from what we used to do, was just sit over there and then run at when we saw the, the objective change. But now that we know the timing and stuff, um, here we go. Uh, it goes a little bit faster, so... And then we have a skip coming up here, which skips about 30 seconds of dialogue, which is a skip that I found. Uh, we call it the igniter skip. Um, we're off to craft a piece of equipment that we need, a tool that will help us basically explode some material on walls and help us get through different places throughout the rest of the game. Um, but what 
One thing you had to do was sit and listen to Lance Reddick's beautiful voice for about 32 seconds. And, uh, you know, we just, we just can't abide that. Um, so what I do here is I kind of look this way on purpose um, so that I don't trigger a certain dialogue. There's a dead machine behind me that dragged this, this big ball into the room. Um, there's something she says when she comes in that we need to use that dialogue when she looks at it to cancel a dialogue that's coming up. Um, in, and that's the long, short story of it, I guess. But So we're going to try to activate this door. And what I need to do is get back around the corner without looking at the machine and then turn around and look at it at the right time So to cancel the dialogue. And it's very tricky because you can't even get close to the machine or she'll start. So now we turn. Are you kidding me? There. So she would say, you know... There would be a bunch more there, but Lance kicks in and gives us the schematic so we can do this right away. One more out. There we go. And now I restart from save, which will put me back inside. And I would split here. And so now we can blow up what's called Fire Gleam, which will kind of help us get through. So I'm going to move away from that so I don't get exploded. I'm going to eat a food that helps me get more rolls and swims. Um... If you roll too many times in this game, um, he will stumble and it kind of slows you down. But that also applies to when you're swimming in the water here. Um, so there's a part coming up where we have to swim for a bit and I want to be able to swim as much as I can. Uh, so we'll, we'll need that food later on. Uh, so we're going to use a little platforming skip here. Normally this room takes about 30-ish minutes casually if you don't know what you're up to. Um, we're just going to skip the whole thing. Hop up here, slide over to this side. Okay. There we go. <laughs> uh, so this room has tons of, there's like two puzzles to solve. You have to move around and blow stuff up. You're climbing everywhere. There's water and uh, it's pretty slow casually, but that's not the case anymore. Uh, sliding is the specific movement for this game. Uh, rolling is the movement for HCD. Yeah. I don't run HCD. Um, there's a couple people in the chat that probably have. Um, and they could probably explain a little bit more of how, how and why that works better. But there is sliding in HCD, but it is not the fastest way to go. That doesn't sound good. Here we have the mechanic where we can cancel the slide and then do it again. But, yeah. All right, so... Here we're looking for a backup. Uh, up in this little repository is a backup of that terraforming AI. Hades was the one that was made to basically destroy the world if Gaia screwed up. Um, so, and that happened a few times we found out. Um, the When we were talking to the cutscene where I was skipping dialogue uh, at the orb, that was the Hades AI from the first game and we destroyed it because Silence kept it alive so that he could learn a few things, um, and it was probably good that he did. <laughs> and then uh, now we're basically finding a facility where the backups were used to perfect them, so they have extra ones. And we get party crashed by thousand-year-old space people who left the Earth when it was dying, and it was basically all your richest corporate assholes. And you can imagine how they treat tribes people. Okay. That was a decent fight. So what we were working on was knocking that big thing down. And so these people um, left the Earth in a spaceship and then came back because of reasons we'll find out at the end of the run. Um, and they have shields, they're impervious to attack, so uh, there's really nothing I can do there, um, except for knock that big thing down from the ceiling, and that's what we were working on there, so. So now we're gonna do a skip that kind of saves a lot of swimming and stuff. I'm gonna abuse a checkpoint by looking at it. Um, and then we restart from save, and it puts us all the way at the end of the... Uh, the escape, basically. 
All right. So we'll skip some cutscenes here, where Aloy gets flushed out by all the water and gets injured, and then she's saved by a friend. And now we're headed to a city of the Utaru tribe, basically their capital. Good mount. I can climb it. Should be able to reach that tall neck easily enough. All right. And if you enjoy choir music, this is the place for you. The singing here in plain song is absolutely wonderful. But they're the Utaro people are gardeners and singers and mostly a peaceful people, but obviously they're dealing with a blight that's ruining all of their crops and all of this stuff. Um, but throughout the game, as you finish the quests uh, involved with these people, we fix things and it starts to look really beautiful here. So Varro is a friend from the first game, um, one of our oldest friends and closest companions, uh, even though Aloy is really kind of resistant to that kind of thing. Uh, she's a bit of a lone wolf. Um, we talk to this person because she gives us a fast travel to a hunting ground, and then we restart from save because Varro and his new girlfriend Zoe um, are really slow walkers, and they need to get all the way up here. Uh, they don't do that very quickly, uh, and, and they tend to chat and have a little fun on the way up. Um, we got no time for that. And so now we're in my favorite part of the run, which is the Tau Cauldron. Uh, there are some really fun skips here, and hopefully they will uh, they will cooperate. All right, there we go. And there's an example of Aloy running into a tree because the mount wanted to hit some wildlife. Um, so I can't stop that from happening. It's hilarious sometimes, like, and maddening how often it happens. Um, but yeah, you'll, like, end up just running into a tree to either avoid or hit wildlife with your mount. So AI is wonderful, isn't it? And there's no way to turn that kind of stuff off, I don't think, either. Oh so, uh, yeah. It's <laughs> worse if... so. Uh, you can actually set the mount to be aggressive, and it will it will do that more often. Um, and if you get off, the mount will just chase enemies down. So, like, it makes it so much harder to play. It'd be a fun meme run, I think. Somebody had mentioned that in one of my streams. Like, turn on the aggressiveness and just be like, yeah, chase the mount during the run. Uh, okay, so here's another. The mount doesn't want to cooperate. He should jump down so I can get down here, but backup strats it is. I don't know why it got stuck at the top. Normally it gets stuck on the outside, but that's fine. Uh, so we're going to use a nice little trick here called a Valor Surge. Um, these are special abilities you can get. Uh, and this one is called Chain Burst. And what it does is chains damage from one enemy to the next uh, in a group. And so a couple of kangaroo-style Leap Lashers are going to come here. I'm going to kill them and then head through this door. I'm gonna switch some weapons. And so the sliding is a bit weird in rooms like this where the floor is super uneven. Um, you do actually get caught on little bits on the floor like this, like little things like that where she won't keep running after standing or things like that. Uh, elevation changes are tough for Aloy, apparently. All right, so our first skip, what we call Tau 1. Uh, it has several ways to do it, but this is one of them. And normally we'd have a whole puzzle to solve and some stuff to pull cast on and all this different things, but uh, we're skipping all that to get to this node right here. Now I'm going to restart. Uh, every time we do an override like that, there's a status on the bottom right that shows up um, that is an override charge. I missed that. That's not good. Wow, she glided way too early. Um, all right, try one more time here. How do we cross? Cables are hey, all right, it worked. No, it didn't. Why didn't you get up there? Okay, well that's marathon luck. I did this like thirty times last night. How do we cross? It's always marathon luck, isn't it? Uh huh. Oh well, we'll get there. Yeah. He's not even jumping on the cable now. Gotta climb, Aloy. We gotta actually get through the split here. 
So she does this thing where sometimes she just won't grab a ledge. She won't climb up. She's just very strange about it. And uh, the collision is very strange on corners too. Sometimes when you're climbing up, you can immediately jump up and like get up there. Other times she'll climb on her own. And uh, every now and then she won't do anything at all. <laughs> so uh, that happens. And there's also like very finicky nodes here too. So like you have to be right in front of it to make it work. Um, you tend to get better at it as you go, so. It's making your life harder for you, Carl. Giving, yeah, you, giving definitely. you a challenge at this time in the morning. <laughs> yep. That's, what, that's exactly what you need, right? I was going to say, it runs before uh, 6 a.m. I don't know. Can't be any mistakes, <laughs> right? Nah, nah. <laughs> and so there's another one of these overrides where uh, you kind of have to wait for it to recharge. Um, we're going to skip a cutscene, and I have to restart so I can recharge it. We have to get down there. And now we've got a quick little fight here. Now uh, we're gonna kill that tri or yeah, the triceratops up here, and then uh, there'll be a couple more machines that pop out of the wall, uh, shield over here. And I'm gonna try to get them before they come through. Got them. Nice. All right. So we're gonna skip a cutscene, and now we're gonna override the. It's kind of the core of this cauldron here. So we're about a minute behind uh, my PB, so we're on a good, good pace here. <laughs> oh, it was cute, wasn't it? <laughs> it was! I was looking at the Triceratops, I was like, do you have to kill it, Carl? Yep, Please? sure do. <laughs> it's okay, Zoe's, Zoe's very sad about it as well, because it was one of their... <laughs> one of their land gods uh so they worship the triceratops and she has a very kind of oh my god they're just machines moment um kind of thing about them so uh so we're climbing why why aren't we climbing aloy that was terrible okay now they're in my way as usual i should be at the top of these stairs already um i don't know why she fell she's not there's supposed to be a hitbox on the side of that rail but that's cool She's just showing off in the marathon. Yeah, I think so. Oh, wants to do it again every time. <laughs> <laughs> is this a good time to squeeze in a quick donation, Carl? Yeah, this is Someone great. It's perfect time. Awesome. We have got a lovely $69 donation from Mickey that says, Good luck, have fun, Carl. And I uh, couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. I just wanted to remind you all about the different incentives, targets, and polls we've got going on at the moment. So we've opened up some poll, um, some targets that are happening a little bit later on, but, you know, we're smashing this. We may as well make them now. Breath of the Wild, get the Master Sword. We need $150 for that. We're already at $79. Thank you so much for your kind donations there. And also, just a reminder about the poll. So the next run coming up is Skyward Sword, so we can either slash or save the remnant. I am still absolutely heartbroken that we're slashing it by the poll at the moment. But you've still got some time. Still got some time. Thank you, Carl. <laughs> oh, thank you. I appreciate the good luck. Thank you so much. And thank you to everyone who donates. It's, yeah, it's such a great cause we're doing today. I mean, plan, like we said, Planned Parenthood doesn't just do, you know, abortions. It's all kinds of health care for people that really need it. So especially people that are unable to access affordable health care in our country sometimes. So uh, yeah. definitely thank you guys so much for that. If I can butt in for just a moment, I oh, would sure. like to... I'd like to mention that, unlike most save or kill the animals incentives that go on in marathons, it's actually faster to save the remlet in this particular case. So, ah, no, there's no reason that we need to actually splash it unless you uh, really don't like remlets. Hey, All right, I guess we're going up the normal way. She is really getting caught on everything today. All right. Another shaft. So we crawl through here, and we're about to collect one of the pieces of a terraforming AI that we found. So Gaia is the full form of the terraforming AI, uh, but there is a piece of it called Minerva that is hiding out here, and we just now saved that piece and combined it with the Gaia backup. And so the voice you're hearing now is Gaia, not at her fullest, but um, able to now... Um, communicate with us and help us and she'll this will be our base of operations for the rest of the game we'll come back here uh, to this area of uh, this um, facility quite a few times so. 
So we have to access this terminal and then come out. Take a look. So then just immediately cancel and head back to Gaia. Looks like I need data from Michelle Normally you would go around here and she would like give you a little spiel about every room that she can currently open up and all that stuff, but we don't have to do all that. It's just the one bit that she, you actually have to do to advance the story. Now we've got about 35 seconds of dialogue to go through. If it decides to skip the dialogue. Uh, it's one of the most times I've ever had to push a button in a run. Like in... in one sitting, I guess. So, yeah. And I have to push X to to skip every one of these dialogues, so I am just mashing away at the button right now. All right, here we go. Need to bring Ether back for Gaia. So we're going to get a campfire here to tra fast travel to. Um, that's why I go that direction and then come back. Uh, there's a campfire outside the other exit of this place that uh, we go to more often. Then, and it saves more time than fast traveling directly to the base. So, um, so now I'm going to get a new mount. Uh, normally we have... Why are you so far away? Just said it was like 200 feet away um yeah, and that's that's the mount for you anyway um so we're coming up here to get a flying mount normally in any percent you can't do this until one of the like the second to last main story quest uh but here we can because it's new game plus and so now we are going to override this sunwing and we can fly and i don't know why it didn't mount right away but that's fine <laughs> everything else is going rather shoddy that's it's all right and so way back when we started doing these runs uh for me that's 634 runs ago um you just flew here uh you just took them out and let him fly uh to his destination uh because that was the fastest way to do it and then the Burning Shores DLC came out, and they made some tweaks to how the Sunwing actually works because they also added an underwater mount, um, a flying mount that can transition underwater, um, which is a cool thing, uh, but not super useful in the run. Uh, but one thing it did was made the dodging, the barrel rolling of the mount be, like, much faster. Um, you can do it more often, and it works much more smoothly you can actually kind of turn him a little bit while he's barrel rolling and things and you can use this to move quicker towards your destination um right now i'm not going directly to where i'm supposed to be headed i'm getting a campfire down here on the top of this uh this little mountain uh this plateau there's one just underneath it and you'll see me collect it here uh but i'm gonna fast travel here later in the in the run so uh now we're gonna head over to where our actual coordinates are set to and, you know, these used to be nice little breaks in the run. Um, <laughs> now I actually have to do something. So if I want to have a PB or anything like that. Um, but if you're wondering just about how much time this saves, um, when I first started using this on this split alone, I got a 24 second gold. So it is quite a bit of time. And I've gotten more gold since then. So it is actually more if you can make it work really well. Um, Kind of annoying, but also if you could see like my controller input or anything like that, you'd see I'm really working the camera angle to keep it kind of steady, really working where he goes in little minute um, changes and stuff so that he's at the right angle and that I'm turning him the right angle during the barrel roll and all that stuff. So it takes a little bit to get used to, but it's totally worth it when you when you do learn how to do it. Getting close to Ether's location. So we're here to pick up another AI, and each of the pieces of the terraforming AI kind of command a certain part of the terraforming system. Uh, for this one, it is the air and the atmosphere, and it's named Ether. Um, there's Poseidon, who controls the water, um, Demeter, who controls the plant life and things like that, um, or the conditions for such. Um, there's Hephaestus, who is like the smith, um, who creates all the machines. Uh, he's the one who's kind of, who was in Tau and made the, the plow horn uh, hate us so much. <laughs> um, he does not really like us. Uh, we kind of tangled with him during the DLC of the first game, and he get, ends up getting away at the end. But, um, you know, you kind of see what he he's doing there. Uh, what am I doing? Going the wrong way. 
Craig. I don't do commentary very often, so sometimes I uh I miss where I'm going. It's all good. If I'm gonna get ether. You're doing a fantastic job, Carl. I'm, really, <laughs> Thanks, I'm yeah. listening to you so intently. I'm like, got my mouth open watching, like, oh, what's gonna happen next? <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I just, uh, you can get turned around in that place a lot too, because everything kind of looks the same. But uh, at this point, it should be muscle memory. It's all good. Uh, so we're going to meet another one of our companions now, and uh, by the name of Catalo, kind of a fan favorite. Uh, he was at the embassy earlier, and he ends up getting an arm chopped off. And so for the rest of the, the game, he's. He's with us. He's one arm, a one arm man, and he's quite badass. Um, no loss of courage through the loss of an arm either. There's a really kind of heartfelt quest where you go and find some old technology so he can have a prosthetic that works and things like that. And he's actually just like, I won't wear it, you know, unless I really need to kind of thing because this is who I am now. It's all kind of uh, the whole, this whole game has really great like acceptance overtones and things like that, as well as what I think is an excellent anti corporate ideology, but. <laughs> Um, all the undertones for the story and how corporate greed destroyed the earth and all that kind of stuff is, uh, it's all very, very fitting for today's day and age. I recommend you do go play HCD again, H. It's a great game. <laughs> I have to say, Carl, the colors and theming of this game is just so beautiful. Isn't it it's nice? Like, <laughs> to see. Yeah. Yeah, it's just great to be like able to play something, like I said. You go fast, yeah. but everything still just looks beautiful. <laughs> I couldn't do it. I get too distracted. Like, oh, what's that glowing thing over there? Yeah, my uh, hard drive's got lots of photo mode photos, photos on it. So, <laughs> lots and lots and lots. You was mentioning about... Um, photo mode the other day when I popped into stream. What is that, if you don't mind me asking? For sure. Uh, so there's, uh, you can pause the game and uh, you'll see a little option for photo mode. And so you can move the camera around and uh, you can kind of take pictures and change her um, pose and her facial expressions and all kinds of stuff. Uh, it's really cool because, you you know, you can kind of get yeah. really fun, you know, pictures and you can change things like focus and uh, aperture and all that kind of stuff to uh, really get the photos you want. We Some people in our community are just absolutely amazing at it. Um, you'd think it was just like real life photography if you were looking <laughs> at it. It's so amazing. So cool. But yeah, it's a lot of fun in a game like this where the, the landscape and the characters mm -hmm. and everything are just so well done. The motion capture and all of the, the CGI and everything. Uh, so what we just did was uh, made him transport all the way down here uh, from up where we first met him. Um, it's a neat little trick where you trick the game into thinking you're following him by jumping off right away. Um, and it messes with his AI. Um, and so when you land anywhere along the path that you're supposed to go, he will transport to you just immediately. Um, and we have a tricky bit of stairs here because, as you can imagine, it's difficult for Aloy <laughs> to slide up the stairs. Um so I'm just going to roll because she doesn't seem to want to cooperate with any hitboxes today. And so we flash the map so that our icons on the map show up faster. Uh, in Forbidden West, you tend to... Where are you going? Um, the icons on the map tend to take a little bit to load. Come on, get up. Scan it properly. Just what I thought. Yeah, she's like hitting everything and stopping today, so I'm not really... It's just one of those runs. Um, it can be really smooth some days where she doesn't hit every little hitbox and stop, and then you'll get these runs where the game is just like, yeah, this is how we do it today. <laughs> All right, so right now we just went up and talked to the leader of this place, and we skipped the cutscene, and he's not showing up to kind of help defend and send people to be new marshals because after the embassy um a rebel uh who is against all the tanakh being united and peace with the karja and all that stuff uh ambushed us and basically killed all the, the marshals the, the people who helped the chief and stuff and she will not slide cancel either right now um so now we're stealing a cannon from a tremor tusk why won't you change Gotta kill all these guys. The Sky Clan will fall. Yeah. Not bad. 
Come on. There we go. It was an okay fight. Um, she wouldn't switch <laughs> to her hunter bow at the beginning. I don't know why, but it's all good. All right. And so what we are trying to accomplish is taking down this big old wall right here. Um... Because the guy won't send people to be to compete for marshals as he's bound to by Tanakh tradition uh, until he says, well, we're safe behind the bulwark. We won't send people to the cool route. And uh, we're about to change that. But you don't just need a cannon. And here's a purple Catalo for your amusement. Coming right up. Coming right up. Okay. Aloy is also very sassy. If you've never played a Horizon game, she's got quite the attitude. It's fantastic. We love a sassy female lead. <laughs> yep. Sassy female genius. You gotta love it. Yep. Sounds perfect to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're actually going to switch our um, focus here to a new AI. Uh, so we did about half of what you need to do, and I'm gonna switch quests here for a fast travel later. Um, so now we switch from the Ether AI to the Demeter AI, uh, because the place where we do that is right over here. Uh, up until a few weeks ago, when a patch came out, uh, or a few weeks ago, for a while ago uh, for the DLC, um, they patched the way the Sunwing works. We used to be able, there's an invisible wall here at this tree line um, that the Sunwing just can't go through. It's made specifically for your flying mount. Um, so what we do, oops, wrong way. Um, as we go up high, we jump off. We used to be able to call it and get through. Um, now we have to basically drop down by hand again, which is what you do in like any percent. Um, and then call our running mount at the bottom. And the reason they do this is because you can get into the facility here from the air. And I don't know, devs probably watched us break this whole split and decided let's not do that anymore. <laughs> um, but ultimately, they just changed the way that mounts interact with settlements and things like that and it kind of just broke the skip so um it would have saved about 25 seconds or 30 seconds here um off of what i have to do here but ultimately it's not all that much and the change in the way the sunwing moves actually saved more time the way that it it like um moves faster with the the barrel rolling and such so we ended up saving more time than we lost through the patch so um which is nice nice silver lining <laughs> it's just harder work to get through it all now bar okay the mount doesn't normally spawn that close to me <laughs> that's fine usually he's up a little closer to the corner of the building but uh, so now we don't have to fight any of these people uh, this is a new tribe called the Quen um, and they are from across the Pacific, uh, and they're here kind of looking for some technology to save their area as well. Um, but they're very culty and secluded, and they keep information from their own people. Um, they have a focus just like Aloy, some of their people do, but they have what's called forbidden knowledge, because they have an older version of the focus, and they can't read certain things. And then the things that they do read that don't jive with their culture, um, they keep from people like normal people right um anyhow see if we can get this strat uh she missed that's fine uh you can land up there and then shoot these guys from up top i, I did not make it work it's, it's a difficult place to land um why are you not dead why are you not dead All right. I really wish these people would have talked to me instead of trying to kill me. Cool. Um, so a couple of different strats. I had to use a backup one there, but you can land up top, and if you do, it actually prevents those two guys from the left that came through the door, um, the one I couldn't kill. <laughs> uh, he won't come out, so I don't even have to kill him if I can land up there. It makes it go just a wee bit faster, but um, it's fine. It took both of us to open up that tunnel, didn't it? Like I said, the fights can be rather difficult if you don't, you're not real precise um, on story. So, like, they can get real frustrating if they end up taking longer than you're used to. Okay. All right. 
one 1,000, two 1,000. And so we do a little jump slash there because it cancels the damage uh, animation from the fire gleam. Uh, normally I'd have to run away or I'd be blown away, um, like physically knocked over. Um, if we do that jump slash, she won't do that, uh, which is kind of nice. So you can be right next to the wall when it opens up. It's not much time saved, but it's a neat little trick to save a second or two each time you have to do it. And so we've got a little maze underground here. Okay. And so even though it looks like we should just be able to run through here, she actually like crawls through it a little bit so we can jump and that will keep her from doing that. Floss Rider, we don't have to fight him. This is what's called a long leg or what I like to refer to as the murder chicken. <laughs> Filthy murder chicken. I don't know why he was even there. That's really weird. I've not been hit by him in a long time. Holy marathon luck, everyone. He's just coming out to show everyone, look, I'm a chicken, I'm in the yeah, game. Yeah, I'm definitely here. <laughs> What's Fancy the moment of fame? <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's, uh, they're very aggressive too in this game, the long legs. They're one of the more like, I'm going to chase you down and get you kind of machines. So um, it's not unheard of that they do that, but normally I get hit bit with like a sonic attack, not, hey, I'm going to come and pummel you. <laughs> so that was fun. <laughs> I'll see what I the more you play in this game, the more it kind of reminds me a little bit of Zelda. Now, particularly because you've had a murder chicken. I'm convinced now it's Zelda. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, but I don't get attacked by more when I go after it, so yeah. <laughs> it's, not, it's not the OP enemy, right? <laughs> Fantastic. All right, so we're now working to kind of make our way through here and find the AI. It's in a room where we can't get to it because there's a metal flower in the way that has these metal vines that are covering the door. And what what we find out in this place is that this is two, uh, where Ted Farrow's company um, developed the technology to use biology as fuel or to use biological um, matter as fuel and that they made the, help make the machines that destroy the world here. Um, but in order to try and make up for that, uh, the people who did it made these metal wreaths um, that they could plant all over the place that would basically suffocate the world um, and make there be nothing for these machines to work with, you know, nothing for them to use as fuel. Um, by the time they perfected it, it was too late and they couldn't deploy it. Um, there no machine that they could send out to put it out there would have, anything they put out would have been taken over by the swarm. Um, so they... We're just like, you know, we did this, but there's nothing we can do about it, basically. It's another kind of tragic story of trying to save the world from this plague, and there are so many of them, um, as far as, like, the things you read about and data points and whatnot. Uh, so it's pretty, uh, it's a pretty fun and really deep story when you, like, go 100% the game and get all the data points and things like that. Um, I guess data points aren't part of 100%, but you know what I mean. Um, the, uh, the story just really kind of fills out and lets you know what people were really going through when the world was ending um, when they were being used as fuel for murderous machines basically um, and the effort of zero dawn and project enduring victory and all that stuff where they uh just tried to hold this swarm off long enough so that they could finish the project and save you know some kind of future but um yeah aside from it being extremely beautiful visually the story is really full and robust and well thought out so and very excited to kind of see what they go with in Horizon 3, too, because and she should have slid a lot further. Oh, well, that's fine. Um, because there's, you know, there's a nice little twist at the end and uh, new enemies and stuff like that to look forward to. So it should be fun. Okay. So we're going to climb up here. We're going to do a nice little long range one shot to a giant bat. Let's find a way to get into the proving ground. Okay. complex should be testation IV. We aim just above the light. Down he goes. It's so still. And then hopefully he doesn't actually come down and block the door. One of those machines. It can turn invisible. We're gonna have to take it out to get into the testation. Uh, it's a giant flying bat um, that can poison you, and uh, yes, it can turn invisible um, with a camouflage as well. Uh, the bats were 
meant to uh, distribute these machines or whatever that uh, the wreaths and stuff, but I never quite got the chance to do that, and now they're part of the swarm. Okay, so this is not the intended way. Uh, there's a hologram playing inside. Um, we found this uh, kind of a little bit out of bounds way to go, um, where we can get to um, a workbench where we can create the module that breaks down these these wreaths, uh, these metal wreaths. Um, normally, you'd have to wait for a door to get out here, and then the door doesn't open until a certain line is said. Um, you're able to access the workbench as soon as that line is said, uh, but you're not anywhere near the workbench when it happens. So we use this uh, little trick to now we'll just sit here for a few seconds and wait for the line to play. And I can use this as an opportunity to so refill ammo, and if there are any donations or anything, now would be a great time. Absolutely. I'm always happy to jump on in. Um, we had a fabulous $10 donation from Conian that says, let's smash that goal, even if it means we have to watch Leanne Hef. And I know Conian's a member of Leanne's community. There's always a bit of meme in with Leanne's community, and that is a run that you do not want to miss. So to make it, we need to get $1,250 raised. We are not far off, team, at currently at $900 nine dollars so well that's absolutely done. fantastic just wanted to remind you as well while i'm here team what we are here what is going on well this is rejects and friends rapid fire 2023 benefiting planned parenthood federation of america planned parenthood states that your health is our highest priority and we believe your body is your own a mission that raf also values very highly Planned Parenthood provides access to safe birth control in whatever form that may be, hormone therapy, STI treatments, and lots more. You can donate by putting exclamation point donate into chat. Thank you. Awesome. So we just broke down our first uh, metal flower, um, which she took an extra swing for some reason rather than just destroying it. Um, but the now we're getting to meet her, uh, which is one of the AIs. We can only carry one at a time, so now we'll have to head back to the base. Um, and restore this to Gaia, and then we're gonna find out that there's something that um, Gaia received a message which is encoded, uh, and we're gonna skip all of this conversation. But uh, we're gonna head off to a forced quest after the first AI um, to find a new companion, a rather interesting one. So um, when we were fighting the guy, when I knocked the giant spider off the, the ceiling uh, and had to swim away and all that, the 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 invincible spaceman named Eric. Um, when the Zenith came in, uh, they had another clone of Elizabeth with them. Um, and it completely shocks Aloy, right? Because she's looking at herself, basically. Um, but it, she was basically raised in in captivity. like So she's very just not confident and all of this stuff. Uh, but she's a genius, just like Aloy. Um, and they forced her to learn everything they could about this AI system because they had stolen a bunch of information about it and stuff like that. Um, so we're about to meet this person because she's trying to kind of escape from the Zeniths, you know, so. Uh, and she'll end up being, you know, our little, one of our companions and eventually our sister. Uh, and her name is Beta. Spoilers. Uh -huh. Is that sister? <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. Sorry. So you'll, you'll end up getting a few things here where it's just like, yep, yeah, I can't. That's not the right way. What am I doing? Oh, I've been down here before. Whoops. I, I went the wrong way, guys. I'm supposed to go around the corner. You've just given us a guided tour. We appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> we're thinking about a different part of the run now. That's fun. So we're going to go to this place. Um, and there's some fun strat here where I get to blow myself up a few times. And it's just a speeped up dialogue. So um, normally you have to wait for dialogue to finish. Uh, what I'm going to do before I can like get up from what I'm looking at. And so here's a dead zenith, um, and you might be wondering, if they have invulnerable shields, how did she die? Well, Silence, uh, the character played by Lance Reddick, found a way to break their shields, and that's one of the scenes we just skipped. And so now we're going to try and investigate how it happened. And so here I'm using a status effect to cancel her uh, examination of that machine, so I can move away and get closer to this examination point before I'm supposed to be able to. Um, so we'll put another bomb down to knock me off of this early, and then I'll be closer to the other one over here. And I can't actually examine it for a second. Like, the prompt hasn't come up yet, as you can see. 
So I'm just like basically getting the movement in early by blowing myself up each time. Perfect. There we go. Sometimes she takes a while to get up, but that's fine. And then we wait for an autosave, restart from save, talk to Aaron before you even see him. <laughs> and uh, now we're going to go talk to Varro and head in. And so we received a message, like an SOS, uh, at these coordinates, and now we're heading in to see what it's about. Uh, and so, again, in, um, one of the things we do a lot is use status effects to cancel animations. Uh, normally she would stand at that computer console until this door is able to be opened. Um, by using the status effect, I can get away from there and be over by the door, uh, and it saves you a couple of seconds, you know, running from one place to another. Uh, so there's a lot of little things you kind of have to remember to do to and with Aloy when uh, when moving throughout. But it'll wear off here in a moment. Some kind of storage room, maybe. Maybe the asset is in here somewhere. A control console to access the storage units. Can I ask you, Erica, what inspired you to speedrun this game? Oh, sure. Um, so... I picked up Horizon Zero Dawn when it was free on the PlayStation Network a few years back. Um, so they were just giving it away, and I was like, all right, cool, I'll, I'll play this game, right? <laughs> um, and then I found a streamer by the name of Elkier TV. Uh, Elk's one of the, the powerhouses in the uh, Horizon speedrunning community. Um, and I just fell in love with his no damage runs and his spear only runs and all kinds of cool stuff that he put yeah. on YouTube and things. And so then I got into his stream and uh, when Forbidden West came out, I was all excited to play it because I, by that point I was so in love with the yeah, lore and everything. I was like, well, watching people speedrun, I was like, well, how can I get more out of this game? Like, well, I'm going to try and do this, right? Like, I like playing it. It's really fun. Like, I'll give it a shot. So I just kind of started streaming. And I was streaming on PS4 uh, back back in the day uh, when 80% and all that was still just the only thing to do. Um, and those runs were around 2 hours and 40 minutes on PS4. Um, I do a God of War 2018 as well, which is a 4-hour run. Uh, but, yeah, doing things on PS4 just takes way too long. So, uh, so eventually... Oh, no, it's alright. Um, eventually I killed my PS4 and needed to get a PS5. Uh, because it just couldn't handle... It couldn't handle running through this game anymore after being 7 or 8 years old. So, um, yeah. So I, uh, you know, got into it and I just got pretty good at it so um, yeah definitely and i've traded world record on this run with uh the current world record holder b dud um who's just an amazing skip finder um he's, most of the things you're seeing me doing are strategies that he's developed um on his own just tirelessly looking for things to do and it, i could honestly i can't thank him enough for the way he's uh advanced this run and stuff so um yeah, but we've just made it a lot of fun. There's some some good competition involved and all that stuff. So, and it's such a welcoming community. Um, it's very yeah. uh, you know European centric. Uh, seems because Gorilla is um, you know uh, a Scandinavian company and stuff like that. So, uh, lots of people from Europe and all that who love you know this series and this franchise and um, are just so supportive and and whatnot. So, um, yeah, it's been been a great time running it. Uh, I've been doing this for just a little over a year now. Um, I just had my affiliate anniversary. So, um, oh, congratulations! Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah, Sorry, but uh, yeah, I'm really just excited to keep going and see where where speed running takes me. So, mm -hmm. ooh, Mister. Outlander. Missed a split. That's all good. That was probably my fault for asking you questions, look. No, it's all good. It was the one before this, actually. <laughs> uh, I probably missed it because I was talking. It's always busy in a marathon. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, and so now we are going back to finish the uh, the AI collection that we started before um, when we blew up the wall. And uh, we're going to come in here and there's going to be kind of a wave attack of enemies that we have to take on. And then there's also going to be... Um, a big snake fight again so which should go quite quickly uh there's a way to make this go really really fast but it's totally rng based on where the enemies spawn um even if they don't cooperate it can take quite a few throws but other than that um you're about to see me use the chain burst to its fullest so uh, i'm going to be chaining a lot of damage here 
it's one of the more impressive fights um when uh speaking of elk and uh being kind of the horizon guru um he's an ultra hard runner so he runs on the work the hardest difficulty and the fights in that are very well planned out um there's a lot more that goes into how you have to hit things and where you have to hit them so here it's just blow everything up as fast as you can so we'll do chain burst So hopefully this will work. I think it did. <laughs> yep. Uh, so two throws is really good. One throw would be great, but the machines didn't stay up there. Uh, that happens because what happens is the chain keeps going as more machines spawn in for the third wave. And you can actually take them all out at once. And the game kind of goes black screen like that and freaks out because it doesn't know what to do. Uh, it's like, wait, we're supposed to be loading something, but it's way too soon for that. So it does the quick black screen to kind of get everything set up. Sometimes that doesn't happen, but then you can get like a loading screen too. So it, either way, you're waiting a little bit. So, uh, but that worked out really well, actually. And I forgot to switch weapons so I could cancel fall damage. Uh, one of the things you do when you drop a long distance is the superhero landing like that. Um, and you can cancel that by using any weapon that actually aims, um, like a bow or a, um, uh, a bomb sling or something. But if you have one of the javelins that I've been throwing, that doesn't do slowdown, so it doesn't cancel um, fall damage. Or the fall damage animation, I should say. You still take damage, but it cancels the animation so you can move faster. So we're going to restart from save at the autosave here, and that'll put me back up top so I don't have to climb the ladder, which is really nice. The in the globe have changed. And so now we're head back. And so now we return Ether, and um, we head off to get Poseidon, which is the water AI. And we're on pretty good pace here. An hour into the run, right about this point, is pretty uh, pretty average for me. And I see you have recovered. Even on a marathon, look at that, smashing it, uh huh? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I see lots of, uh, lots of the Horizon community here. Welcome in, everybody. Aaron, Auntie, Mello. Feli, Scar, everyone who's been here since the beginning, too, that I didn't say hi to. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for being here. Lots of early birds in chat. How awesome are you all? Anyone, Coming along. Downstairs. Whatever time it is, you thank you for hear. being with us. You bet. Okay. I do know for a fact it's still quite early for some of the folks in chat, so... <laughs> Got it. Uh huh. There we go. And so this was the campfire I flew to when I first got the Sunwing. Um, so all the way here. <laughs> Come on. There we go. She didn't whistle right away. Uh, so we're headed to that little tower off in the distance there um, to find Poseidon. Um, and so the story here this is Vagus that we're headed to. Uh, if you saw the kind of next game loading screen before this with the beautiful music by variety thank you so much variety um the uh the image on the screen was of las vegas all lit up at night and so this whole place is just filled with holograms on the buildings um when you finally finish this it's extremely gorgeous to look at just to sit around in the desert and stare at in the game it's just like something you can just look at for hours it's so nice um so we're headed here, uh, and the story is that sometime in the you know 2000s uh, later or mid 2000s, um, Vegas is just it's a a dead place. There's no water there anymore. Um, you know, there's people have all left because it's being in the desert and climate change was destroying the world. And a guy basically found a way to bring all the water and and all the people and stuff underground into a dome and things like that and save uh, Las Vegas. You know, because he grew up there and he loved it and all that good stuff. Um, and so now underneath here is full of water. Um, <laughs> so we're going to be swimming quite a bit for a while, um, and it can be. Good or bad. We'll see. Uh, this is a split where I could lose like 40 seconds um, easily uh, by just little mistakes that, that add up. So uh, so we're going to hop down here to get 
a pressured air capsule. As part of this story, um, you can imagine they were trying to go down into the water uh, to get these um, holograms that these, these guys I just met are basically a traveling entertainment group. Um, and they're looking for these holograms that like show stories and stuff um, for their show. And they can't swim down there. So, According to Moreland, should be hey, that's not so bad. At least he was close by. Need you to flap though. Um, and so we're building a mask, a diving mask, that will allow us to breathe underwater. And since it's New Game Plus, we already have that. Um, but you have to do it as part of the story, so. And so we're looking for a herd of machines. And they're actually about to drop in here because I shouldn't be this close. <laughs> Okay, now I just need to loot these two. And we fast travel back. That was a pretty good fight. Nice. Why? What? What are you doing? Why? Why did you do that, <laughs> Aloy? What are you? Why? Why would you drop? Come on, Aloy, hmm? work with us here. Yeah, just a little bit, please. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've just no idea what she did. Ah, uh, that's fun. I'm holding up, she drops down. That's life. Go ahead. Assemble the diving mask. No, I not I need to talk to you. Stop it. There we go. Uh if you talk to him before using the workbench, he'll say that line. And it messes with this uh dialogue here. <laughs> you have to wait for it to finish. So I accidentally must have hit him before I hit the workbench. Alright, so here's the one of the more frustrating parts of the game, because swimming is pretty finicky. Um, she has a bit of a mind of her own sometimes when it comes to where she wants to go. Um, and she does a lot of crazy corkscrews and things like that that can kind of throw you off as well. So, um, But ultimately, camera angles and the, your speed and stuff matter. Uh, and so I ate some food while I was on the Sunwing earlier, if you missed it. Um, and there's a little symbol in the top left corner that uh, adds more to my evader skill, which allows me to do this quick swim. And I can do up to eight before the ninth one will make me stumble. Uh, welcome Lapras to the show, everyone. Um, <laughs> this is a machine called a Tide Ripper, and I always think it looks like a Lapras or something like that. Crossover Pokemon episode, let's go. <laughs> All right, so I look at that door over there where our friend is hanging out. Um, there's a current that won't let me get over there, but that's where Poseidon is hanging out. Uh, so we're about to drain, going to try and drain all the water so that we can fight the machine and get Poseidon. So, so we're about to open up a little map, and then we'll head to two nodes that will help us open sluice gates that will drain this place out. Sorry, I'm just counting. <laughs> okay, and then we basically you just have to pause a little bit between uh, to reset the count. Um, and technically, like I usually just push like L3, so she'll swim a little bit faster. But um, yeah. So normally there's another way to get up here, but we use this little climb, jump over, ignite this switch to the wrong weapon um and so i'm going to use a status effect to cancel a wheel turning animation here normally she would stand here and turn that wheel now it's just going to turn on its own and as soon as that moves i can swim out uh so that saves a few seconds a little, um not having to use that animation so and again she didn't want to swim up right away really giving us a full so showcase today isn't she yeah, she like, really uh, just wants to I'm show off everything she can do. Hard. Yeah. <laughs> Watch what I can do. <laughs> even when I don't, even when you don't want me to do it, I'm gonna show it off. <laughs> this is a good time to sneak in a quick donation. Card. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, we have got a, a lovely twenty dollars from Erin four four six that says "Car wills it," <laughs> and I'm sure he does. It's definitely all gonna go absolutely swimmingly. 
on that note as well, let me just tell you a bit about who we are, what we are, what we're doing. This is Raf, um, Rejects and Friends Rapid Fire, and it marks the one year anniversary of Rejects and Friends. Um, this all started from one meme being about rejected from GDQ. Um, in our first two main events, we raised over $7,500 for Plan Parenthood, and we expanded into our sideshows, Event Horizon, Sub Zero, and now today with Rapid Fire. So your support and viewership make this event possible and a continuous pillar of the community. So don't forget to put exclamation point schedule in chat to see what's happening and exclamation point donate in chat to donate to our fantastic cause. Thank you. That might be the main station. Thanks, Abby. And I believe there's also a credits command as well if you want to see and give thanks to the folks who put this on. I uh, can't thank you guys enough for inviting me. This is awesome to be able to showcase this run. So um, we, yeah, as you, as you heard, we got rejected from GDQ, me and several others who uh, put in for, for this game. So it's kind of fun uh, to be able to, you know, show off to people who would watch a marathon like that and who might not uh, get to see such a fun game like this. So thanks so much. Yeah, there's so much going on behind the scenes, and it's also smooth, fabulous team. Yeah, this morning went great. Um, for four thirty in the morning, everything was great. <laughs> uh, so here's a neat little trick. We wait for an auto save, and we're gonna do two restarts from save. And what this does is put me all the way back out from where I came in the first door of this area. Um, not all the way down, but uh, where I swam down past the big uh, crocodile uh, while Abby was. Uh, given the lowdown. Um, so what we're going to do now is head over to uh, our giant Tide Ripper, and we will hopefully take him down in one throw. And we'll restart, because this will put me closer to the door I need to go to. We wait for her to say down it goes. Uh, if it doesn't say that, it's not dead. <laughs> All right. And so Lapras's short-lived time here in the Forbidden West is over. And there's a console down these stairs. should be hiding in some kind of processor. I need to find a console to gain access to it. Probably the one with the fish on it, huh? That one? Sweet. Ah, coffee. Sweet nectar of life. Thank you so much. Ah. Taking Poseidon triggered a restart of the All right. power system. So we head back out, um, basically to to find out that you know we've reset everything, all the water's drained out, so they can come back down and get all the holograms and stuff they want. But if you look around, you can see just what I'm talking about. Um, it's really beautiful in this place. There's a lot of iconic like Las Vegas landmarks and stuff here too, so it's pretty cool. It's like a dystopian playground. Basically, like a yeah. And fairground, that sort of vibe. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's an awful lot of pull cast launching to get out now because, we, as you saw, we swam way down to get into this place. Uh, there is an elevator you can take, but we are going to take the express route. complaining about not having to climb back up when she's already up. Whatever she did. <laughs> okay. We fast travel back. Cool. A lot of compliments in chat for how coherent you are at the whatever hour it is for you now, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, fabulously, <guys>. my aunt. <laughs> yeah, I woke up about 3.50, you know, through shower, uh, made coffee right after that, so, yeah, I'm pretty good. I'm generally up about 6 a.m. anyway, so it's fine, but, uh, yeah. So I am a father, so... <laughs> 
The boy uh, gets up rather early, <laughs> being all of five years old. So, yeah. All right, and so now we're going to head off. Oh, wrong button. Uh, to San Francisco. Um, so we're gonna fast travel over here, and I need to call the mount immediately after the fast travel, or there's some dialogue will play that will make me not be able to do that for a long time. Uh, so now we're going to do some more Sunwing rolling. It's a fair bit of that at the end of the run. And again, I'm going to switch the quest because what that does is it, after the, this quest is over, it opens right to the map rather than opening to another page. Um, it is really helpful as far as like not having to switch to um, either fast travel packs in your quick menu so that the map will open right up or... Um, you know, having to switch screens when you menu, so it just saves me a little bit of time later, because when there's that prompt on the screen for a quest, you can just hit the center button and uh, it opens right up so you can switch it. Uh, it's kind of nice. A quick switch to it would be even better, um, like on screen, but uh, hopefully we'll maybe get some more quality of life improvements with this game. We'll see. The DLC was pretty good, and they're still patching quite a bit of things. Uh, we actually just had a patch earlier this week. Um, that uh, took away our duplication glitch, uh, which was something some speedrunners were using, uh, including myself, to kind of build their loadout and things like that. Um, and there's an arena in this game, and I guess I can explain it while we're flying, um, that you can't leave normally when you're doing the fights. Um, you, like, they're staged fights. Why are you going so slow all of a sudden? Um, but if you can get out, uh, there's a stash in this game for extra resources. And the game kind of has a save state when you start the arena. And it saves everything you have in your inventory. Um, so you can go in the arena, leave, put everything in your stash, come back. And the game will give it all back to you, but keep what's in the stash. So you basically double things. Um, so there's exponential duplication growth. It's really nice. Um, so yeah, it's... Uh, not available anymore unless you're on an older patch um, until someone finds another way out but taking a boat but it really gets rid of all the grindy uh, outfit and weapon upgrades that can be part of this game that's one of the one of the complaints is that by the end the uh, the RPG elements can get a little eh, <laughs> this is taking a while because you have to fight some pretty tough machines um, in order to get the pieces you need and this guy is just not doing it today Okay. Can we actually get on? I don't even know what's happening. I just pull casted. She should have hopped on, but she didn't. Um, okay. Mount doing mount things. Uh, so, good morning, San Francisco. It is sun rising in the east. And again, another beautiful scene. Since we're behind, I'll just kind of show you how everything looks. You get the Golden Gate Bridge pieces, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, so we're headed here because we spoke with Gaia, we got those three AIs, and she says, basically my power's not enough to absorb Hephaestus because he's been messing with his code, making himself more powerful, all that kind of stuff, but we need Hephaestus in order to defeat the Zeniths and things. So let's, uh, let's go get the type of clearance we need in order to override him. Uh, which is the Omega clearance that Ted Farrow used to kill all the workers of the Zero Dawn project um, at the end of the game. So Ted Farrow was a real prick. <laughs> uh, so we're off to get his. He was in his own little bunker at the end of the world, and that's where we're headed now. Really, really good mount RNG there. That's awesome. All right. Um, sometimes that mount can be so far away that you spend 10 seconds trying to run for it. So that was really good. Um... Okay, I gotta eat some food, because we're gonna do a little more swimming. And say hello to the Thunderjaw, and then goodbye to the Thunderjaw. Bye, Thunderjaw. That's Teddy. We don't see him for very long. I need to speak to Alva. By all means, then. Open the gates! All right. So there's a little cutscene here that we can't skip. This is one of the only ones, I think, in the whole thing that we're not able to skip. Been true to your word. I'm and the reason you can't skip this is because it's loading everything underneath you, so. Shall we? Hmm? Nice brows, beast. 
Let's see your brows, your mouth, chat. What have you got? <laughs> Let's see those it's, brows. It's been an ongoing <laughs> thing in my chat recently, and then uh, <laughs> Auntie uh, ran out of one of her brows emotes, so I, I gifted her oh, one no. of Beasts a few weeks ago, so <laughs> she's been using them ever since. I got to get me a brows emote. It's an absolute must-have. Uh, so we get one of the real out-of-bounds tricks here, and the only real out-of-bounds, uh, and you'll see what I mean by real out-of-bounds. I am about to go right through this wall. And don't ask me who found this. I can't recall. Um, oh, sorry, she didn't make it. I think I swam up too fast. Um, but they found this pretty quickly. <laughs> um, just searching around for ways to kind of get through this area. Um, because you swim through some things, there's some consoles and things you have to a activate in order to shut down some fans that also make you swim slower. We're going to skip all that by going around it. Uh, and you can see the fan there in front of me spinning. Uh, there will be some color changes and things as we go through here, but... Uh, so, a little flashes for anyone who's sensitive to that. Um, but it should be over here in a second. Uh, so yeah, all these fans kind of go and stop, and you can see the the marker, you know, um, telling you where to go is like, oh yeah, go in here. Well, we're not doing that. And so we hop over, and we end up coming in underneath the gym, okay. because Ted Farrow had to stay in shape. Okay, pry the door. And so you find out some really creepy stuff, like Ted had a harem here, basically, and whenever people didn't want to be around him anymore, he would just turn off an implant in their head. Guy was a real prick. <laughs> um, there's a fun thing I like to do here, to hide me from... And the guy who's forcing us to do this all with him uh, is the CEO of the Quen, the CEO, the CEO. Um literally spelled like that and he is forcing me to put on clothing that elizabeth wore so now because he thinks he's ted farrell reborn uh which is why we're here um i mean it's not why i'm here but it's why he's here and he thinks he's that guy <laughs> on the big statue so uh, and he's very just uh lofty self-entitled dickhead with a lot of power so um but he's gonna die you'll miss it but we call it splat percent Okay, so we get to fight the Corruptors from the first game, because of course he's got the AI that destroyed the world here in his bunker. Um, and then we make our way through. And so I'm forced to wear this outfit uh, for the duration of this quest. I can switch back afterwards, so... I don't need to, and I probably won't. Um, but yeah, they're, uh, it's one forced thing that they make you do here. Uh, so we're going to open this door, because this is the way I'm coming through after this cutscene plays. Um, so I'm a little low on resources from all the misses and things like that at the beginning. So I'm going to put down a bunch of bombs and then pick them back up. Or my old liquor cabinet. Rip liquor cabinet. <laughs> Kenya is this man's daughter. Basically what he's doing is you're finding out that Ted is trying to lengthen his life. He's doing the same kind of uh, stuff that the Zeniths were doing in extending their lives. Uh, only his did not work out as well as we find out. Um, Ted is over here and he's a monster. Uh, you don't see him, you just see a hologram of him. Um, but when the CO finds out, he basically is like, burn the place, kill everybody, tell no one what happened here kind of thing, and then you have to escape. So, we're about to find that out. Um, so I'm going to drop a trap here. My strat is to put one quick acid trap down to kill one of these big guys. The two guys that were guarding the door I came through, I'm about to fight them. And another one. So I put one down, start the fight. That guy dies. And then there's one over here as well. And I missed him, I think. Where is he? How did you get over there? I guess it took a little while, but whatever. Uh, so quick fight there. 
Now we have to escape. Um, before the patch for the DLC, you used to just be able to slide through the lava here, which, you know, is fun and all. Uh, but now they don't let you. Lava is an instant kill in certain spots, so we have to go around the long way. Uh, normally, I would have just cut through and sl and slid right through the lava, and it wouldn't have hurt me at all, really. Um, can't do that anymore. We did find a nice little time save to make up for it. Um, that actually makes up for it and then some, which is coming up here. Uh, we're going to skip a cutscene called Splat Percent because that giant statue of Ted Farrow just fell on the CO, and it's totally poetic. And so using this aim uh, changes the way Aloy's hitbox works with the environment. And certain slanted um, areas, you can stand on them while you're aiming, but not while you're just standing there. So that's why that works the way it does. I can just go right up there. Otherwise, I'd have to climb around and avoid some Quen and all that kind of stuff. And that's annoying. No one wants to do that. All right. Not a bad time so far. Pretty average. Despite the mistakes. What's nice is this is a run where, even if you make mistakes in the beginning, if you're like me, you reset a lot because you want a world record. Um, but if you are not like me, you can save a lot of time throughout the run. Um, so, like, keeping with it and doing no resets is totally worth it in a run like this uh, because of all the things that have to go right. So, uh, And so now we are going to Gemini, which is... Um, another cauldron where Hephaestus has been hiding out um, and we are going to try to capture him and in the process uh, lose one of our companions this guy right here and Beta is being real sketchy and doesn't want to go she thinks she's going to be captured again and she's wondering what her defect is and Aloy's telling her Ross raised me and it was a strength I never knew I had and she didn't have anyone to raise her so she's not defective it's a very touching sisterly moment, and um, now we're going to head out. So, um, there are some very specific things that have to go very well in this split, or it can get pretty bad. Uh, this is a very tough part of the game, even casually, uh, so these all kind of have to go very well. Uh, there's... A, a skip and several fights that have to be lined up um, perfectly for it to work well. So he jumped out really early. Not sure what that's about. And you're going to be in my way now. Yep. That's fine. Actually, that worked out just fine. I'm switching some weapons, which is why I'm not sliding yet. Why won't you get up there, please? Wow, simple jumps even not working. Cool. Alright, so, got everything I need now. Um, blast trap I'm gonna drop when I get down here. I'm um, gonna run through this room. Uh, we're gonna see a giant dinosaur come out of that field later. This is like the center room. Uh, Hephaestus is building a machine there to kill us. Um, so I'm gonna drop a bomb here for a machine that's about to spawn later. I'm gonna let the murder chicken go for now. Because if I kill all three of these guys um it spawns extra enemies uh, so we kill the two long uh leap lashers which are the kangaroos and then we do this little skip if it works come on there we go thank you Aloy. great job uh normally you'd have to do a lot of running around and climbing and stuff again nobody wants to do that murder chickens off to my left He's going to hop up here as soon as I try to override this um, corrupted node. Where are you? There he is. So there was another Triceratops coming for me, but I blew him up with the trap I put down. And then I just have to kill that long, uh, that long leg or the murder chicken, as we call him. Um, now you'll see the corpse of... There's the... Triceratops corpse that I killed. And then I have two watchers that need to die. So got them both. Nice. I'm going to jump up here. If she decides to. Fancy shot on this spike snout. And I'm going to place three very specifically placed spike traps. Uh, one for a bellowback. One for a claw strider named Mark. One for a watcher. Okay. Um, let me think. 
And I have one bomb if it doesn't go well. So there's the Bellaback. There's the Watcher. There's Mark. We're good to go. Bye, Mark. We hardly knew ye. Mark has a name because he's covered in armor. And uh, he's a pain in the ass if he makes it in. Even on story, you can hit him with your, your biggest... Uh, uh, weapons with the most power, and if you hit him in the armor, he won't go down. It's uh, it's a pain in the ass. So he got a name. Anyone who is a pain in the ass gets a name, yeah. including Good. the mounts most times. Mark, I'm glad we don't have much to do with you, with all your armor. <laughs> all right, let's. Ooh, I only have one. That's got to work. Yes. Pretty low on uh, ammunition at the moment, but that's okay. We'll have. Time for the end. That was a really good Gemini, guys. Um, I'm pretty happy with how that went. It was so smooth and fast. Make sure it stays there. I'm heading back. And so this ground here on the way back is notoriously hard to slide on. You, you see me turning angles to the to all the little stairs and stuff because she slides better at an angle than she does straight up. Um, but you see how she kind of just stops sliding and things when she hits stuff on the floor. So got to make sure we're doing it right. And now we're about to send Varl to a farm upstate. Everyone say goodbye. Is 100. Bye, Varl. Bye. Nice to see you. <laughs> uh, we get attacked by the Zeniths during that cutscene. Um, one of the Zeniths then turns on the others. Um, and we find out here, uh, through a bunch of skipped stuff, uh, that she was actually Elizabeth's kind of girlfriend for a while. They were in a relationship, and she's still in love with her. And so now she creepily was like... Hoping that Beta would be a replacement, but then um, finds Aloy and is like, oh, this is obviously the better replacement. <laughs> uh, it, she's just creepy. Um, and played by uh, Carrie Ann Moss, actually. Uh, Trinity from The Matrix. And so we walk up the stairs because it cancels Aaron's dialogue there. Um, so we can fast travel. Otherwise, we can't fast travel till they're done talking. Uh, but there's a little spot there where we use dialogue to cancel dialogue again so that we can do something. Uh, and so now I just need to make sure I've got enough of these. And they don't know about your base either, in case you were wondering. I've sent you data on the Horus energy cells you can use I don't think I need this, but... Okay, so we're ready for the end now. So we're going to fast travel out. Uh, so Varl is dead. This is his burial place, uh, where I was standing when we started the run. Zoe just told us that she's pregnant, of course, and I moved too close to the campfire to fast travel over here. Uh, it's actually faster to fast travel to this campfire from over there, um, but I moved too close to it before I hit the button. Um, so we're going to go in. Uh, now is the point in the run where you would normally get the flying mount, and so I have to, as part of the story... Uh, get the override again um, before we go out. So, so we craft the override back out. Now I'm gonna fast travel outside and go up and re-override a Sunwing because that's also part of the story. You lose your your mount once you have to craft the the override. So, and we also when we went to San Francisco, you take a boat and that causes you to lose your charger mount, your horse mount. Um, so there are times where you just can't use a mount, and this is one of them. The last time we weren't able to use a mount was basically um, the beginning of the run. So just a little bit where we got to run and then Good. There's some trying to switch. There we go. Have to approach them quick. Try not to scare them away. Okay. I'll skip a little cutscene, which would normally show Aloy getting on it for the first time, but... Tilda, I'm in the air. All right, so... Of a neat little trick coming up that hopefully won't waste two minutes. Um, I don't even know if I should do this. What do you think, chat? Should we jump off the tall neck? <laughs> um, so this tall neck, normally you can't get off of it. Uh, we have to jump on, override it, and it would give us a piece of the map. Uh, but then if you jump off, you can die. <laughs> And then I have to go all the way back and get the Sunwing again. <laughs> so it's a big time loss if you do it. I'm going to give it a shot. We'll see. And sometimes you can't That's even right. get off. So if I don't get off, I'll just uh, I'll just stop. But 
<laughs> um, ultimately, though, with the addition of this barrel rolling, it actually makes this harder because he's not in an opportune spot for me to jump off. Um, as you can see, there's a little ring on the ground. It is the path of where this tall neck walks. And on the outskirts of it, it's raised. Um, the small height difference between the outside of that track and the inside is enough to kill Aloy. Like, it's really kind of annoying. <laughs> Uh, what I want to do is land in a raised place, uh, like this little flower bed over there in front of me. Um, so I might just like take a second and let him move around. Um, but either way, what this accomplishes is I can't normally get off of this in the story, uh, but I can use a, an attack technique to kind of clip through. Um, and what that does is allow me to run closer to my objective before I can be picked up by my flying mount. Come on, work. Yeah, it's not gonna work. And now it's too late. Um, so the clip is really goofy, kinda have to like do it at the right time. Um, but it allows me to run closer to where I need to go and then the mount picks me up closer. So it's just like time saved and that we are normally just waiting around. Um, but sometimes it just doesn't work, so. All right. And so that giant, exp oh, what was that? Sorry, game volume is a little loud for me. We get to see the uh, beautiful mechanical bird again, though. So it's yeah, fun. absolutely. Uh, so we have <laughs> this part of it, and then we also have uh, the next split after uh, this section. Uh, there's a bit of flying as well, and we use the mount to clip through another shield um, that will hopefully work the first try. <laughs> uh, but that one has several backups, so it's kind of nice. Uh, but it's a way to skip basically all of the final quest uh, by using some checkpoint abuses. Um, this the final skip has been patched so many times we've had to find different ways to do it but it's still able to be done which is really nice because uh, it saves quite a bit of time uh, so we're gonna grab this energy cell now that's what the uh, tall neck override did was a bit of code added to the override um, reactivated all these Horuses, um, which were the giant machines um, that made the little corruptors and like took over the world uh, you can see their corpses are all over the place on the map um but basically they have these power cells and at part of this part of the game now you can pick these up and drop them on groups of enemies and it will stun them and you can kind of drop in and do the whole death from above thing um so yeah a uh, neat little mechanic that they added because there are several late game side quests that have lots and lots of difficult machines to fight so Especially the Thunderjaw, Tremor Tusk, Clamberjaw fight. Um, it's, a, it's a crazy one in the Valley of the Fallen quest, but yeah. So now, we're going to blow up Regala. I'm going to shoot Regala on her chest. I'm going to shoot Regala on her weak knees. And down she goes. And then I'll be kind and we'll save her. But she dies later anyway. You can choose her. For her to live and you get an outfit and you can choose for her to die and take her bow um Ooh, choices. and it needs to skip <laughs> choices choices and choices indeed. choices all right come on map there we go all right and that would be the end of uh raining on regala's parade okay so now we're on to the final quest an hour and 36 that's not bad let's go it's gone so quickly, I've just been enjoying myself the whole time. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty fun one to watch, for sure. And it moves quick now that like even, we don't have the brakes with the Sunwing and stuff. So um, the run goes seems to go by a lot faster when you're engaged the whole time, that's for sure. Yeah. I used to have several like bathroom breaks in an hour, 40-minute run. So <laughs> not really necessary, obviously, but like it, it was nice to have if you needed when you're doing many runs yeah, in a row. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so now we fast travel back to Tilda's house. Tilda is the zenith that kind of turned on everyone, uh, played by Carrie Ann Moss. And then she uh, she's going to also kind of try to kidnap us and take us off planet, which is why she's the final boss, actually. Um, so now we've got a long flight. Um, this structure on the right-hand side of the screen is the zenith base. Uh, and around that whole island is a shield. You can't actually get through it. And part of the story is Tilda knows a way through and um, she can get us through and into the base. And then there's a whole running through fighting machines, you know, meeting with companions and stuff like that. We're not going to do any of that. Uh, what we do is use the Sunwing. Um, we go out of the play area 
because that allows us to clip through the shield. Um, inside the play area, the physics around this shield and settlements in general are different uh, for the mounts. And after the DLC, they actually made it harder for you to get closer to settlements and walls and invisible walls and stuff with your mounts. Uh, but that doesn't seem to have been the case outside the play area. So we go past a campfire that we use to start the quest. Um, we'll get the campfire so we can fast travel to it um, on our map. But then what we do is go out of bounds, clip through the shield, go to a point on the map where we get a checkpoint that is all the way through most of um, the quest. And then once we start the quest, the game will think that we were at that checkpoint. We can restart from save and it will put us all the way up there. Um, so it's a really cool skip. It saves like half a minute and uh, it can be pretty difficult. Um, there's several ways to do the clip. And I recently kind of found a way to do it while staying on the mount uh, because I don't like having to hop into the water, wait for the mount to fly to a certain point, call it. I'd like to just hop off and hop back on if I can. So. Um, I did find a way to do it, and I'm hoping it works this time. I practiced it probably 150 times last night. <laughs> well, my kid was like, how many times are you going to do this? Um, yeah. As long as it takes. <laughs> as many times as it takes. Dad wants 10 in a row, okay? Let me get it. <laughs> All right. So we're heading over here. You're going to see that it tells us uh, we're leaving the play area. We should turn back. And then I'm going to hop off, glide for a little bit until I'm over this ridge in the water. Pull the mount back. I'm going to move to a point right here on the shield. I'm going to hop off. Call the mount. Grabs me, clips me through. Let's go. Let's go. Yes, it worked. So the trick to that is to hold square so she jumps off the mount. And as soon as she jumps off, to mash the down button to call the mount and then he will stay behind you. The trick, though, is not to push forward into the shield until after you've called the mount and whistled. Um, if you pulled forward when you dismount, the mount will fly forward as you leave its back, and he'll clip through without you. Um, that is not what we want. So to do it consistently, you have to be a little bit patient with your button presses, and it's so hard to just be like, don't push forward too fast. <laughs> Because it's really like half a second you have to decide when to do things. Um, but it does work consistently when you do it that way. Because he'll stay behind you and then as, you, as you're moving forward after you call him, um, you can pull your glider out and she'll kind of stick to the shield and he'll grab you. Uh, so we went and flew to that point after the clip and that's where we're going to end up again. So I fly to that little pillar right there and then I restart from save and it puts us right back here. Um, so, now we're going to go and take care of Eric once and for all, because he's the one who took out Varl. Nice little cutscene here. And hopefully there's no sound glitch or anything. Seem... I love that line. <laughs> Apologies for that. Alright, and so here's Eric. Fun thing about his helmet, it doesn't protect him in the back. <laughs> so you oh, that's can hop right. Yeah, you can either throw a bunch of bombs at him and kill him in one throw, or you can just run behind him. His helmet is protected in the front, but not in the back. So you get a nice uh, little one shot there in the back of the head. Uh, so this is the final fight. Uh, we're headed up. We're about to find out that, you know, Tilda's chasing one of the last Zeniths right now because she's after him. He's like their leader. I'm gonna let you, we'll let her explain. I'm afraid so. He's restricted its access to the top. You'll have to climb from there. I have to go. I almost have him. It seems I went too fast to get the uh, Aaron and Elva dialogue here at the end, so it's gonna be a little quiet while I do this final climb. Hey, you gotta go up, Aloy. Is this a good time for me to uh, jump in with? Uh, I think we'll be done in about 30 yeah, seconds. Wait. Absolutely. I didn't <laughs> nah, want to bother. I was like, oh, I can't judge when to jump in. Nope, that's all right. No worries. Uh, we'll be done in a moment. Uh, the, the fight is just one quick shot right after this oh, cutscene yeah, skip. Okay. So, yep. So. And then get ready to end the timer. That's a one shot. We're going to skip a cutscene. And then when I get to the top of the stairs, when the cutscene starts, we end the timer. So three, 
two, one, go. Nice. Right on. Excellent. Well done. Congratulations. That was fantastic. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. It goes fast. There's lots of movement. It's yes. very involved the whole time. Um, thank you guys so much for being here. 142, 26. Not bad. I know. Excellent. Below time after all that beginning of the, oh no, it's the marathon <laughs> run and things happen in the marathon run. But yeah, um, they sure do find you car please shout out yourself yeah absolutely um you can find me on twitch at greedy old car um we i stream most days uh, i usually take a day or two off a week but we play this we play god of war 2018 ragnarok um you know lots of casual gaming and stuff like that it's a great time come on by uh and if you want to find uh the horizon speedrun discord is available as well um i've got links to that uh in my channel as well if you got anyone is looking to speed run this uh, it's a great community we've got tons of resources um, you know, so come check us out if you're you know, wanting to play some PS5 runs. Awesome. Thank you so much, Carl. I've really, really enjoyed myself. I'm definitely budgeting to now afford to buy this game as well. Nice. Um, all the games I want, all the games. But thank you very much. We're going to pop to it. Quick BRB. I've got a few announcements while we're getting our next run set up. But a big thank you, Carl, again. You've been you fab. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.